Warning, the following video will contain language of a frank and explicit nature as well as graphic detail of the shootings, and I said plural, shootings that happened this weekend in Orlando. Viewer discretion is advised. If any of this disturbs you or you feel oversaturated by the news coverage, I understand completely. Stop watching now. For everyone else that's watching, hey guys. Uh, this has been one hell of a weekend. Uh, Friday night, of course, uh, uh, The Voice and fellow YouTuber Christina uh, Grimmie, uh, star, had, uh, was at a concert. She got done. She was signing autographs, doing a meet and greet, and a fan from another part of the state came up, shot her dead. Her brother jumped her, and he pulled out another gun and shot himself. And that was just messed up. The news had covered that, and it was a tragedy. The next night, uh, Saturday, I was originally hoping to go to a one-year anniversary party of one of the largest comic book shops in Florida, if not the country. Unfortunately, I was scheduled to work. So, after work, I came home, I chilled out, and I wasn't really... I wanted to go badly. I really did. Um, but it wouldn't seem to meant to be. I fell asleep with the TV on, and when I woke up, the news came on, and they were talking about a shooting at a club. I, at first, I thought they were just covering more details about what happened with Christina's shooting, and then I woke up and I saw that, no, this is another shooting the next night, and it was at a nightclub. It was a hostage situation for a while, the police shot at him. He guy shot at the police. The guy, uh, guy wounded someone in the officer in the face. The the uh, bullet ricocheted off of his Kevlar helmet. Thank God, you know, otherwise it would have killed him. And um, the shooter died. Not saying his name. I don't feel like giving that asshole any free publicity. Um. So it was horrific. At first we thought. The estimated to death toll was 20 people and 30 or 40, you know, hurt. Then they said it was actually closer to 50 casualties and 53 injured. Now they're saying the full number is actually 49, but they're also keeping an eye on people in the hospitals because they're not sure who's going to make it. There were reports from EMTs and such going in there that they described the blood being everywhere so much that walking through it, sloshing around, it was like a, a pipe had burst. I mean, instead of water, it was blood. And one of the most horrific things that the EMTs had to go through, and the police had to go through, was all of these poor dead people, their phones were going off for family members frantically trying to text them or call them to see if they were okay. This was an ugly thing done by homophobia. See, I didn't even know it was a gay bar at first. All I heard was it was a reporting of a bar. It's now coming out about what supposedly motivated it. And, of course, it also goes into some of the beliefs and stuff of the shooter and whatnot. You know, I don't want to get into that. I know that I was originally wanting to go to Orlando and I didn't do to whatever but when I heard about this I frantically started checking my Orlando friends the ones that did make it to the parties that and found out that fortunately it was on the other side of the city so they were okay but I'm hearing that some friends of theirs were in that club so the loss is very real for them that some of my friends actually work just a couple blocks away from where the shooting happened. They were at work and they were on lockdown until they had to get out of there. Another friend has a family member that's near that area. And it was just horrific. And there's a lot of just hell and confusion. I'm, I'm so sorry for everyone that, that lost 
and lost someone that they cared about there. It's just a freaking tragedy. Now they're saying it's one of the officially worst mass shootings in U.S. history. I'm not trying to get into debates about body counts and other statistics here. So, uh, But a lot of people started jumping into doing some good things. Uh, a lot of people, hundreds upon hundreds, started lining up to donate blood. I mean, there were things on John Oliver's uh, show that showed a video with hundreds of people lining up to donate blood to help people. There was other people that went to stores to buy water to give to people that were donating blood and the stores found out so they gave a bunch of water and supplies to people for free to hand them out. This is what I like about humanity. It comes together in times like this. It does become something greater but we all grieve in our own ways. I know that had it not been for something else I could be in Orlando. Who knows, I could have been driving by there when the shooting happened. Um, we, like I said, we all grieve in our own ways and one thing I kept on thinking about was, I know you're going to think I'm crazy for this, but a while back I was considering doing a new video about uh, DARPA, a defense research program, and actual super soldier things that they were looking into. And I was just thinking about all the stuff that they're, uh, they're rumored to be working on and how much I just wish I was a test subject and happened to be there so I could do something to help. I mean, just I know it's fanciful, just go with me here on this, that a few things are talking about, regeneration of things like limbs and stuff. That'd be great. I could donate blood or hell, even organs to people that were injured and I could recover it. It's okay. I, I could help heightened senses or other abilities of awareness, I could perceive the oncoming threats and warn people or stop them myself. Increased strength, speed, reflexes, so I could fight off the attackers, both foreign or domestic, if that were the case. Bulletproof skin, so I could be a human shield in front of people. I just wish I could do something. But as it is, I'm just... I can't. I'm piss poor right now so I can't donate money um, due to some things I was taking for various meds I can't donate blood right now and I wish I could do something but I saw something that a friend of mine had said and she's actually part of the inspiration for what I'm about to say here uh, a lovely friend of mine named Dion she's a performer. She's fun, funny. She's as graceful and compassionate as she is beautiful. I mean, she's got a heart as big as the state, and so does her boyfriend, John. They're performers, but they also give back when they can. They, they clean up their areas. They, they, they help with charity drives. They give back. When they say that they're part of a community, they're not kidding around. It's a give and take and they give just as much, if not more. There's even a thing that um, I saw that Dion had said, she, she looked at the news, she kept on asking a question over and over again, why? Why is all this violence happening? Why all this senseless death? Why all this radical amount of hate that's just popping up, especially here where people live? And at first, I, I tried to answer in a little way there, but then I saw other people asking the same question over and over and over again. Why? Why is this happening? So I realized it wasn't just a rhetorical question. People are genuinely are unable to fathom the level of hate and violence that some of these people are capable of, and they're trying to process it. They just want to try to understand it. They want to try to grasp it so they can try to figure out what kind of a world they live in. And that's not a bad thing. So, Dion, I thought that one thing I can do for you and my other friends that ask this question is to try to answer it. So, this is in part for you. Why do people have so much hate? Why are they willing to go through do this level of violence and all this stuff? I think I figured out the best answer. 
it's not a political thing it's not social it's not economic it's not even religious it's a very human thing and this is what I think the very root of it is see everyone wants to have a, a better life and a, live in a better world a lot of people are fully aware that there are some things that are wrong in this world however good intentions can be twisted they can be corrupted they can be turned and the second people look at someone that is different from them from any reason from skin color to religion to place of birth to uh, beliefs uh, from you know, economic standpoints from the poor to rich all of these different things the second that you see someone is different from you as somehow being lesser not as important lower inferior to where you are mm -hmm. essentially dehumanizing them that's when the corruption starts then all they need is permission or the will to commit these heinous acts because somehow they've convinced themselves that these people who are for all intents and purposes the same as them are so different that they refuse to process that these people are capable of feeling or experiencing the same pain that they are and that's not right like I said it's a human thing it's human nature people believe in good versus evil they believe in a struggle if there's going to be a fight there has to be a winner there has to be a loser so where does this come from where does it, where does it go and how bad can it get twisted like I said it's not a bad thing to want a better world or a better life or to even have a healthy amount of competition to do things but when you start to look at somebody as less than you just because they're different or competing with you in that regard the second you see them as less that's when it gets bad and it's easy because we all do it no matter where we are young old no matter where we are in life we have done it and it is easy to get it twisted I want to try to do a little example now I thought about originally maybe posting or something I was concerned about on the same night that was going to happen and the party it was going to go to but I also watched a lot of people I watched uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and stuff I watched Bernie Sanders jump on bandwagons pushing their specific political agendas right after this all happened this is not the time for agendas this is the time for humanity this is the time for understanding this is the time for genuinely trying to come together and understand this so that's what I'm trying to do to try to help people to understand now I'm going to use an example of something and I gotta say this right now coming up what you are about to hear is a dramatization it is a what-if scenario it is a possibility of what would happen about going along a certain line of thought a certain path that could be taken too far I in no way encourage violence I am in no way encouraging any kind of threats reciprocation or any kind of threats or attacks on anyone that I'm talking about in this or anybody else so I do not advocate the violence I'm actually about to speak as an example I don't promote it I'm not supporting it and if some asshole goes around and does it well you're on your own because I didn't put you up to this don't fucking do it okay probably hear my phone beeping it's uh, been ringing off the hook practically there's a lot of uh, things that's been coming up on my news feed and I wanted to cover a few things here to give you an example of just how easy it is to go all dark side on things there have been shortly after well, all the deaths that started happening there were posts that started being made on Twitter Instagram and other news things showing about some twisted thoughts about what people are going to say here now what I'm going to say here is going to be graphic 
it's going to be full of homophobic hate speech and bullying. I do not promote this shit. I am only reading this to let you know about the world we live in and using it as an example of how things can get twisted. Uh, there is a uh, website called Thought Catalog. I actually posted something about all the, uh, you know, the people that were responding in hatred to all the, the shooting in Orlando. And they actually post the people's names and stuff like that there. And it kind of gets graphic. Uh, one person says, Florida Pulse Gay Club attacked. I'm so happy someone decided to start shooting perverts instead of innocent people. Yeah, aren't you just fucking lovely? Uh, someone with the initials WNTN, like a news thing here. 50 gay people died in a nightclub. That's what you call an effective shooting. Good shit. Gays don't deserve to live. You're now promoting death of someone that you don't like or disagree with or that you look at a man kissing other man going, ew, ew, gross. You're wishing that they were dead. You're promoting that. The blood pressure starts to boil a bit. The only good thing about the Orlando shooting is that it was a gay club, so less gays in the world today. Someone else. I wake up to some dude shooting up a gay nightclub. Isn't that weird? Homosexuality is condemned by God, so that's why he let that happen, people. Now you're bringing God into it, and you believe that this is okay. Now, imagine that these same people live close by to you. That they've harassed someone you love. Imagine that someone you care about was being bullied or harassed by these homophobic bigots that they're being, or they're mocking them. Now imagine that they're down the road. Hell, maybe they're just down the block. And for a while you're trying to even you know, avoid them. You're trying to go on past your life, but they say something. They get up in your face. They want a fight. Hell, they even start to pick a fight with you. They're trying to bully you because your loved one was hurt. Because of this. And they don't care. They don't care about that. All they care about is pushing your buttons. So you do hurt them. Badly. Hell, you might even get a rush out of it. A nice little burst of adrenaline. You get that one good shot in. You start feeling good about yourself. But of course, they don't shut up. They don't stop. They never seem to stop. There's even more. Oh, here's one. God opened his... Oh, th this is one from Westboro Baptist Church. You know, these guys. God opened his armory to deal with proud fag America. 20 dead in mass shooting at Orlando Gay Nightclub. Right. Now imagine it's a group of people that you know never stop and keep on pushing buttons. You know for a fact they're not going to stop. In fact, they're trying to bait you on so you can hurt them. And things just go too far. They're not going to stop. They're never going to change their mind. And these people are breathing the same air as you, taking up the same natural resources. These bigots are doing nothing productive. They are horrid people. They are showing less and less humanity every day and more as an example of what's wrong with the world. So let's say, for example, you've had enough of these guys. And there's only one way to silence them permanently. You just need the right weapon. And you also need the right will. Go ahead. Someone might whisper. Maybe a little voice in your head says, you know what? These guys have it coming. It's never going to get any better. Maybe you're here to silence that voice. To stop it. Do you know what you have to do? Are you willing to risk getting caught? Or are you just going to do your job? So more people here. Oh, I as an individual would congratulate and give thumbs up to the brother that killed filthy gays at the Orlando shooting. Someone else. Man, I don't know what's better. The fact that gays were killed or the fact that the killer was Muslim and a Democrat. So now it's political. Let's say you go the ultimate route and this bully has just pushed you too far. So, you do the unthinkable. You silence them with a gun or a knife or a garrote 
or some kind of weapon, how even with your bare hands if you're angry enough, and you feel good about yourself, the adrenaline rush, you stopped a monster like that. And then, more happens. More come to raise their voices. That is the right target for such shootings. Gay should be shot for disrespecting the natural order. So more people raise their voices. Gay nightclub? Just disgusting. I think the gunman did a good job. Gay people are sick. Okay, at least it was only gays. Not like they add anything to mankind, except disease. Bit of a non-story, really. These are websites that actually have the Twitter handles of these people. With the right little know-how, maybe you have a friend who's a bit of a uh, technical guy on the computer, you can find them. You can track them down. You can let them know exactly what you feel to their face. Or, better yet, why give them the chance to open their stupid little bigot mouths? Now, you're still doing the world a favor. At least it was just gays this time and not innocent people. Mockingly posting hashtag pray for Florida with smiley faces. The shooter is my hero. The cops should be sued for killing a hero who was doing social justice. I mean, since 80% of Americans no longer have brains to know that homosexuality is a great sin against God and every natural human law. Let those who knows please buy guns and kill off any gay, lesbian, transgender and their likes, including Bruce Jenner or whatever he calls himself now. May the soul of the shooter rest in perfect peace. Amen. And FYI, I am a Christian, not a Muslim, and my religion strongly condemns any acts of homosexuality. Really, uh, funny. ISIL has been saying the same thing as some of these radicals. See, you can be a radical Christian. You can be a radical Islamic terrorist. It doesn't mean you speak for all of them, but you're really starting to wonder. It seems like everywhere you go, there's more and more of these guys popping up. It's like a damn disease. Man should not lie with another man as a woman. It is an abomination. This was God's hand, and he will pluck them away one by one. I have no judgment on what others do, but God does. Motherfucker, please. You're saying you don't judge. You're judging right now, but you're sitting there with a ringside seat. And you're wiping your hands like you're holding like I didn't do it. I got a ringside seat. I ain't doing shit, but I'm watching. And you're judging too, you cunt. To me, they should fill all gay bars and blow them away. Maybe parents should really do their job and teach the child how to become men and women. Nobody is born gay. Actually, biology says differently, you man cunt. They are made by their own parent. You got a boy? Teach him how to become a man. You got a girl? Teach him how to become a woman. And it just goes on and on and on. So, it seems like every time you take one out, Another pops up in his place. Two more. Three more. They're like fucking Hydra. And now, people are starting to notice the similarities in all these deaths. You haven't been caught so far. But now, people are wondering, could someone actually be targeting these people because of their beliefs? Because of their being bigots? Hmm. Interesting. Well, then it gets really crazy here. I already mentioned about Westboro. There was... A preacher in Arizona. See, here's the thing. Westboro and other supposed Christians have been going on saying that this is God's will, so they're okay with it. There was a preacher in Arizona that he said that he doesn't believe in vigilantism, although he does say it's a good thing that they're dead. Of course, according to him, he doesn't think that... Uh, that's the best way to do it. If you're going to kill the LGBT people, you have to go through the proper channels. You have to have them executed by a religious nation with moral laws. Like Nazi Germany with the death camps. Like ISIL's doing right fucking now. You know, all these people are getting brainwashed about religion, supposedly saying it's okay to kill these people. You know what? This is spreading like a disease. 
You don't blink twice when you take cold medicine or an antibiotic. This has to be stopped. Find their churches. Find where they're picketing. Take them all out. Why not? You're doing the world a favor, and you're still better than these monsters. But then, it starts to get bigger. Now, other people start getting involved. Not just religious leaders, but secular leaders, too. There's a Texas Lieutenant Governor, Dan Patrick. Right after this happened, he starts you know, posting Bible verses, particularly saying, you reap what you sow. A governor has been infected by all of this. A governor! Someone that actually does make actual laws that are supposed to protect people, and this guy's letting it slide, saying, well, it happened. Wash my hands of the whole thing. Well, fuck you, governor. I'm sorry, lieutenant governor. But wait a minute, that's not all that. He has people that voted him into office. He's just part of a symptom. He's not just infected. He's a carrier. He's infecting other people with his hatred. He's infecting other people with his bigotry. And it's even spreading to the top bar. Here's one. From Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump. Shortly after, he posted... Appreciate the congrats for being right on radical Islamic terrorism. I don't want congrats. I want toughness and vigilance. We must be smart. This is the same guy that said he likes stupid people, or the uneducated, I should say. Don't want to misquote you, fucker. But wait a minute. So, it's not just him. As bad as Trump might be, as bad as the governor might be, there are people that vote for them, people that support them, Hundreds of thousands, millions. All of these people are tainted. All of these people are misguided monsters that have lost any claim they have to humanity. They all have to be stopped. So, the next large rally? Maybe there's a good way to stop this. A bullet isn't enough. Bullets, okay, but how are you going to get the guns in there? Even if there was a way, you can't take out of all of them. Maybe something a little larger. You know, Trump's always pulling up in an airport. Maybe something out in the open, a quick van or something like that filled with something. What did Timothy McVeigh use when he took out Oklahoma City's building? What was it? Uh, diesel fuel and info? Maybe that'll work. Maybe that'll stop everybody. So you load up a truck, you're ready to do it. But by now, you've gotten cocky. People catch on. And they actually manage to start closing in on you. They're trying to stop you from saving the world from these monsters. And there has to come a time and you have to stop and you have to scratch your head. Why are they defending them? Can't they see what they're doing? Can't you see what's happened to these people? And something happens. The bomb goes off. You do manage to get quite a few people. And it is a bloodbath. If anyone's keeping score, you're currently up there in the top three. Meanwhile, you're just sitting there wondering, what? What's everyone mad about? Now you're confused. If these were actual people, then you could be concerned. But they're not people. They're just bigots. They're only bullies. They don't do anything good. I'm doing the world a favor. And even if I die, at least I'm doing something. That was what he was talking about. We all have thoughts. We all have anger. And we can all express them in different, hopefully creative ways. You don't have to go into actual doing violent actions or thoughts. You Sure, we all have them. And it's natural. Especially when you talk about people that are pushing your buttons. That are rubbing the salt in the wounds of your pain. But you can choose to act on things. And you can choose to walk away or to act in a different way that isn't promoting the violence, isn't causing the whole eye for an eye thing, that isn't looking at someone that has a different view from you as simply being evil or less than you. 
So trust me on this. Don't become a monster like that. In one Batman movie, there was a thing where someone close to him died. He came back from the dead, long story. But he asked, why couldn't you kill the Joker? Why, of all people, why didn't you do it when he took me from you? I'd waste him. Why didn't you? Because your moral code says it's too hard? Is that it? It's too hard for you? And he's like, no, God, no. It's too damn easy. It hasn't a day I haven't thought about getting a hold of him, doing every diseased, painful thing he's ever put anyone through, and then ending him. But once I fall into that abyss, I wouldn't be able to come back. See, that's visceral. It's tempting. It's mob justice, but we have to realize we're better than that. Sometimes we don't have a choice. Sometimes people are scared to death. The best thing I could say is come up with a plan if you're scared, but don't let the terrorists win. Don't let fear rule you or guide you. If you're scared, then plan. Come up with a plan for action if something were to happen. Prepare for the worst. But don't live your life scared to death of it. Instead, live your life as you are preparing to hopefully never have to use your contingency plans. I don't have an agenda. Love one another. Live like there isn't a terrorist. Be happy with one another. And see each other for the people that you all are. By the way, in case some aliens are watching this video right now as a judge of humanity, I'm not trying to knock non-terrestrial life. I'm just trying to speak to my audience of, of human beings on Earth, okay? So, no offense. I had to put some kind of humor in it. Look, don't let any part of you, something you love, something you care about, your freedom to go out and make your own choices, don't let that become a casualty of fear and fear-mongering or anger or hatred. It's okay to feel them, but you have to have the choice of what to do with it. Make the right one. Love one another. Be there for one another. Be the best that humanity has to offer. And just do what you can. I'll keep an eye out for other possible things that happen in the future. And I'll try to let people know if I see anything. But in the meantime, be there for one another, guys. And anyway, that's my opinion. It all starts with the simplest of thing that could make someone fall into a pit. It is a slippery slope. And watch out for that abyss. I know what I'm talking about, and that's a story for another time. Don't fall into that pit of seeing someone that you hate as less than you. And even if you do fall, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, if you're lucky, you can find someone that's also aware of that pit reaching out to grab your hand and save you. Don't slap it away. Don't judge it, even if it is someone that you normally would say you'd hate. That's a miracle no matter what belief you are, even if you're atheist, that's humanity saving your ass. Make the most of it. I'm with my people of the LGBT community in Central Florida and elsewhere. I'm with my people in Central Florida, and I hope you guys are going to be okay. Until next time, Dave signing off. Peace. Yum, yum.